Hey everyone, welcome to a good football show. I am Matt Straup. It is Thursday, July 21st, and today, as we are known to do approximately once a month during these long summer months, we're going to be doing a live draft here on the show. I'm joined by Pat Darty, Pat Corain, Kyle Dvorak. I think we're underway here, guys. What's what's happening right now? You guys are all three drafting. We are underway in a live best ball draft right now. It's I happening. just took Justin Jefferson at the one two, and then Warren Zevon, one of my musical heroes, who has been deceased for 13 years. Just took Christian yes. McCaffrey at number three. Yep. The cup goes four. Where is everybody picking? Pat Pat Darty's picking second. The last the last time Corrine and I picked, I think we back to back again around the same spot in the draft, too. It was you like guys won't be each other we, Yeah, I'm I trying think to we find oh, pick- there's we're nine ten. Yeah, I'm you- nine and Daily Rojo is ten. I think we might have had it <laughs> right. flipped though. We were ten nine. I Pick, no, actually, this might be the exact same draft we did. This was the um, exact you know, same, I believe. Ago. By yeah. the way, Daily Rojo we, really forced a Rojo blurb on the site today. It was a bad Rojo uh, blurb. It was, a, uh, it was an anti-Rojo blurb. It was. It was. it was a cope. Rojo There's blurb. almost nothing better than, as a, a big Rojo fan, blurbing a bad Rojo news item <laughs> and then being told, we can't have that on this. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you were so moved the lead. Travis Kelsey went fifth. Jamar Chase went sixth. Austin Eckler seventh. Stephon Diggs eighth. Number nine. This I'm on the you, clock. Kyle, I know this would benefit Corrine to have me take a bad pick, but Derrick Henry's falling uh, two picks past ADP, one pick past ADP, and I don't have a lot of Henry. I think he's who I take here. My other options would be like Dalvin Cook uh, or like, I don't know. I think we already got Stephon Diggs went before me. So I think I'm Henry. You, you definitely Henry. are because you just picked him. Yeah. So yeah. Kyle's taking Henry. Corrine, Daily Rojo is on the clock. <sighs> I, I don't like this we, we censor bad Rojo news, by the way, on the website. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that. So uh, that's that was a delightful part of my morning. Uh, I'm taking Devontae Adams. Uh, I think Najee Harris and Don Cook are fine there, but I just I just don't want to take them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I thought I thought you guys must have like big complicated reasons for everything, like the week. The week 42 matchup is just no good. <laughs> I've got great content for this. I was taking, I got Javante Felder me to pick 36 on a, on a DraftKings draft. But if you have 36, obviously you have 37 as well. You're picking at the 12 spot. So I just took whoever I wanted at 36 and took Javante in the fourth round, just so I could have a team that got Javante in the fourth round. Literally no difference between your order of picks if they are literally back to back but it felt better by like a meaningful amount to get javante in the fourth round and i'm happy with that decision even though it makes no difference on my team's like expected value the longer so, uh, explanation of my Devonte pick is that i i do prefer to come away with one wide receiver there rather than go rb rb on the the back half of the board um and so i figured there wasn't a great chance cd lamb would come back because like kind of the only guy left uh so i still got swift you just got so rojo who catches passes yeah you got yeah that was at 15 Corain took yeah. swift preceded by debo samuel cd lamb Najee harris and dalvin cook who went 11th and then kyle you took aaron jones who we've seen go early and often in these best ball drafts yeah, I've got a big uh, a big Chad vibe from my draft going. Derrick Henry, like the ultimate alpha bro move. Uh, though I do think like Derrick Henry, especially in underdog where it's not full PPR, like has a very realistic shot at finishing top two in scoring. Like he was easily on pace to do that last year. And we saw him catching more passes in last year than he had like at any point in his career. He had, I think he had like 19 catches last year, which matched his season long total from any other year. And he played half the season. I'm not saying he is reaching some sort of incredible threshold to be Christian McCaffrey. But like, if you tell me he is like a 1600 yard rusher and a three, 400 yard receiver, that is like so much different than the bet we were making three years ago or whatever it was. Coming up at pick 23 and all the receivers are already gone. Now there's two good receivers left. Man, Saquon went. I was hoping Saquon would fall to 23. Warren Zevon, he's been dead 19 years, by the way. I really hope he doesn't snipe me. At 22. <laughs> so T. Higgins, 19. Saquon Barkley, 20. Joe Mixon went 18. Uh, and now I can't see the board because some someone's scrolling around. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I am doing this draft. Like, to some extent, I'd like to not uh, punt this off. Unless, man, we really got to um, uh, be able to expense these, unfortunately. This is my own bankroll. And, uh, it's the most expensive point... podcast I've ever done in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Can I just turn it? Should I just turn autopilot on? You think, <laughs> guys? Um, I give. Okay, I have our draft board up now for those who are. Oh, uh, I yeah, I, I just okay. Oh, that's even yeah, that's even better. All right, so, guys, tell me who to take. I'm on the clock. We've got twenty. The only guy in my in my queue is Cam Akers. Uh, Pat, I believe this left. would be collusion if we tell you who to take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is dicey uh, territory here. I might, I might time way, out into Cam. I don't know what his ADP is. A forty-four. <laughs> I mean, there are receivers on the board I would take here. I'll just say that. Um, well, it's too late. I'm gonna time Kyle, out into Cam Akers, and I'm. You don't have to have the draft board up all can, the time, Kyle. I I didn't really mean that. <laughs> I also have it on my phone. I actually like drafting on my phone uh, a little better. Okay. Okay. Everything is broken. I, Pat Doherty well, would not know how to draft from a phone, just for the record. That I actually happen. did a podcast from my phone last year for our, one of our DK, um, one of Wait, our DK drafts. So I have you, drafted from the phone on the pod. Oh, I thought you meant you did the entire podcast. Like you were just like, hey, guys, here's me on my phone. <laughs> no, like, I always do that. Yeah, oh, I actually well, you, holding you the steady uh, hands, then. selfie arm. Yeah. 30 seconds, Pat. Oh my God! It's back to me. Oh my yeah. God! Which receiver? AJ Brown. I'm gonna do AJ Brown. I want some upside. That's who I would have. That's who I was alluding to earlier. <laughs> as that's who I would okay. have taken before I took Cam Akers. Frankly, now I can't wait to stack them with Jalen Hurts and Kirk Cousins. Am I right, folks? So, so Pat, this uh, Akers, this draft Andrews, is called Chubb, the snake AJ draft. Brown. Yeah, I know. I always forget about the concept of a snake draft when I'm on a podcast. Uh, I've yeah. never snaked before in my life. Um, Pat just makes his pick and then just kicks back. Thinks he's ready to kick back for Warren 10 minutes. Warren Zevon from it's, Beyond the Grave is going robust RB. <laughs> okay, robust so we, we've got our starts here. We had Roto Pat, Justin Jefferson, uh, Cam Akers. I went, who did I go? Derek Henry, Aaron Jones, and Daily Rojo went Devontae and DeAndre Swift. Uh, whose do we like better? Because I, I would not be taking Cam Akers in the second round is, is all I'll say. I will well, say he's I a good say baseball he, player. Step one of a, a of a draft, um, which normally doesn't come up on these streams, is is don't reach so hard that the draft ends up getting invalidated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, screw you which is, this, actually this wait, is a, if you don't if you don't borderline. like the start to your draft, um, definitely reach really hard to invalidate your own draft. I will say these ADPs <laughs> are totally. This is not going to be redraft ADPs. Cam Akers is not going to be going behind friggin' James Conner. My God, you people are sick. Just <laughs> absolutely sick. Just sick, <laughs> sick, sick, sick. Um, yeah, but uh, I actually don't mind giving Cam Akers over James Conner, Alvin Kamara, Travis Etienne, Ezekiel Elliott. How are all these guys going? What is this Cam Akers derangement syndrome? I mean, you like, have, you have like 350 touches. He, I mean, he also came back to be one of the least efficient running backs in the league last he year. He just obviously. popped his Achilles five yeah. months before. Isn't Achilles also an injury that we look through history and say, like, really, players don't? To me, it's best of both worlds is that he knows he can trust his leg this summer. He got the hard part out of the way and still won a Super Bowl somehow. Um, I don't some, all aboard. The I mean, league. a lot of players won a Super Bowl last year. They did. I mean, that's true. Uh, ben Skrownik is a got a Lombardi now. So, of course, Daily Rojo, Kyle Pitts. Uh, I know we yeah. talk a lot about like strategy and stuff, but sometimes like I just want 150 of the same team. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kyle, you went Cortland Sutton. Is that a guy you've been drafting a lot of? I don't seem to recall you taking him in any of our recent drafts. Yeah, I've actually been leaning more towards Jerry Judy, but the idea that Judy could, and it's possible, I, I really like sort of wanted to push up against this more, the idea that Jerry Judy could be the third receiver just in terms of overall snaps. Like I am sort of warming up to that idea that it is a possibility, right? And that they could run more to tight ends. They have good tight ends. So I am warming up to the idea that we could have an efficient, but overall not like league breaking or league winning season from Jerry Judy. And that has moved me to sort of go back to splitting my exposure evenly or closer to evenly. I still like Judy better at his price, but I'm closer to even taking Cortland Sutton now versus Jerry Judy, just because Sutton, I really don't see a way that he doesn't play nearly every snap. Tim Patrick could end up being the number two in terms of snaps. Still not, I doubt that in production, but it's a risk that I've thought more about recently. Kyle, could you now do me a favor and scroll down on your screen so that I can see rounds four through six? Yeah, I'm not in the middle got, of a draft right now. You've got this, fine. Well, I understand. It's been established <laughs> that you are drafting. By the way, you guys I, can I help me. If we get caught colluding, we just reach out to Josh Norris and Hayden Winks. They'll fix everything. They'll <laughs> fix uh, At this point, so, Pat, I think uh, <laughs> we may be past the point where we're... 
We can salvage it. Mm-hmm. It's cutting through the group thing. I mean, I do have Cam Akers, Justin Jefferson, and AJ Brown. I mean, I'm not that upset about it. Just no, it's honest. fine. It's fine. And to be Whoa. honest, I mean, Cam Akers might not have come back to you in the fourth. He sometimes does, but he often does not. So if you want Cam Akers, okay. you got to take him. Why is Cam Akers going behind Ezekiel Elliott? Like, is this real? Like, what, what exactly agree. is going I, on I, in your guys' like little Akers community? Me too. Um, yeah, me and Kyle are really driving that Zeke ADP. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, Kareem, we both are actually starting pretty, uh, pretty macho right now because you have three running backs and a, you only have one wide receiver, I think, right? Three running backs. No, I have two running backs. Or two running backs, three non wide oh, receivers, you. basically. And I started back to back running backs. So we're both, um, like, I mean, clearly more comfortable doing. Uh, I wouldn't call these robust, but generally in years past, we, I, both would be on brand for us to be like, I've started nine wide receivers. Maybe in the 15th, I'll think about my first running back. Whereas now um, I have definitely come around to the idea that like, there's probably a, a significant amount of value to be had in like one of the three running backs that does break the league. Cause it's pretty consistent that that happens. And I'm especially doing it like when I think the costs are good. Guys, if I already have two receivers, can more, I, can I take more, George more. Kittle? Can I go robust? Oh, sure. I, you could go. You could go take Jerry Kittle Judy. Here. Judy or Kittle? I'm taking Kittle. Screw it. I want upside. I would, I would be happy to get Kittle. The only the only reason not to have taken him there is that the one hole had Andrews, so you probably could have gotten Kittle. That's mm, and there goes Judy right after. Tough. No, no, this isn't a snake draft, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, you, yeah, it's going back to the, true, true, true. the last round, right? Yeah, I can't keep track of other people's teams. <laughs> so that's, way, way, that's way too complicated. Lot. You're asking a bit much from that. <laughs> Can I order the Juju Smith code red yet? Uh, I guess screw it. I actually hate this pick. Man, hold on. I'm going to, I might wait. I'm going to look at the running backs real quick. You're not on the clock or anything, so I wouldn't I worry about it. I think I'm yeah, going to take, pl- oh God. Yeah, no. Should I take Rashad Bateman or JK Dobbins? My Ravens fix folks. Screw we worried it. about Dobbins with the recent news. No, but I mean, yes, slightly. <laughs> we're we're, we're, well, we're robust. Not. We're robust over here. I got Dobbins in the sixth today, man. You're getting a discount. It's pretty nice. We're robust over here. He went yeah, 50th I would, I would, here. I'd go Dobbins in the sixth. I, I'm not sure, especially with uh, uh, Pat, who you drafted. Actually, is that your first running back? No. Oh, okay. God, no. He's got Cam Akers. We're, we're all there's going. A little guy named Cam Akers. <laughs> the Cam Akers debacle of 22. <laughs> Crane said I, I was fired yeah. for taking it. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for this bit really to go against you like that. this is just it's a, it's a tough scene. <laughs> It is tough, but it's fine. It's That's fine. honestly probably the most upset I've ever seen. Corain is when Pat Darty took Cam Akers. <laughs> We're a, a nation of laws, time. laws and justice. I mean, it's fine. Round five so far: Justin Herbert, J.K. Dobbins, Brandon Cooks, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, David Montgomery, Kyler Murray. So four quarterbacks in the first. Oh, I don't know, seven picks of this round so far here in round five. Yeah, I, I would have. I was waiting for one of the elite quarterbacks to make it back to me uh, i will not be though i wouldn't group jalen hurts quite in the same tier if i had to get very specific about it do i have to take a quarterback this round? never no darnell gotta... mooney and now kyle you're on the clock what are you doing i don't want to take dk metcalf because i have to write up the the seattle offense for tomorrow which will probably be today or <laughs> days ago by the time you're listening to this and i man this is uh it's gonna be a bad team it's gonna be a truly atrocious team i think the best out for this team is literally getting jimmy garoppolo i, I think i think that would be such a massive win for the team and it's been bandied about that like really there are no suitors left for jimmy garoppolo services so it's not going to cost you anything he will get cut almost certainly if he is not traded for because he's 24 million that can basically all be shed to the uh, San Francisco 49ers roster or their, their cap. So if you can just get rid of 24 million for a backup quarterback, you're probably going to do that. And at that point, it's just who signs him. and it's like a 50, 50 shot. So I actually think that's like making, that's like the best way I can be optimistic about a truly uh, dreadful team. <laughs> Kyle, I, I, Hate to do this, but I got to ask you once more, I, probably not for the last no. time. Can you scroll down again so that we can see the. Oh, look at that. That's... Kyle, for the love of God, <laughs> would you scroll down? Antonio Gibson, <laughs> pick 61. We're coming back toward Daily Rojo and Kyle again. Uh, what are we thinking, uh, Daily Rojo, with his next pick? So I took Rashad Bateman, who uh, wrote a pet, kindly did not take. Um, <laughs> my wide receiver, too. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't speak up and say Bateman is because I was praying he would come back to me. Uh, uh, yeah, now you're colluding against uh, your, I'm not really your boss, but I was I'm saying colluding you're colluding against, against your you. boss. 
Yeah. So <laughs> Otherwise just, known as drafting against you. It's called competing as you yeah. are. Uh, yes. Supposed to. I'm going to contact word. underdog support and be like, 11 other players colluded against me by taking players I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in the day, uh, you wouldn't man. do that kind of thing. To... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, then I took Amon Ra. Amon Ra, which I feel good about. That's my second I line. I got DeAndre Swift uh, earlier. So that's kind of nice, a, a little stack of sorts. And uh, you can I also, stack up the Jared Goff offense. You got to do it. You got to do it. Um, Simply put, you must. And I also think he's a like a mini tier break. Uh, at, you know, I, I don't like going to Amari Cooper as much. Uh, yep. I, I was hoping Moore you wouldn't take right him. After. I knew you would, though. I was thinking it would be, if anyone else was ahead of me, I felt decent about having a, a like a 50 50 shot at getting a Mon Rocks. I do think, like, once you get to Amari Cooper, I know what Amari Cooper is, right? He's good, but I really don't think we're getting this massive season. Like, we're not drawing dead to get a really big season from Amon Rocks. We saw it last year, and I get his competition was uh, worse for targets, but like, we might not see Jamison Williams for a while. Like, DJ Chark, I mean, the only types of players who fit the style of Jared Goff is just guys who have eight odds below 10. That should be Amon Ross. So, I knew you take him. I was hoping you wouldn't, but I, I didn't feel great. Here, I got, I got a consult. So first off, Tyler Lockett is the wide receiver of 40. Like what, what, what is, what are you guys drinking over here? Like what is, uh, have you all been lead poisoned? Like, I'm not really sure <laughs> what is going on. <laughs> Some of these ADP. And the we question now. Actually, we don't even know what direction you mean that in though. Are we taking him too uh, high or too low? The question here is, too low. I've got yeah. Justin Jefferson and AJ Brown. I have George Kittle. Do I need to force a Trey Lance stack in? As ADP is eighty, this is pick seventy-one. I mean, can I can I try to wait yes. on Kirk Cousins? I guess Hunter the King already has a quarterback. See, this I, is I, the thing, I, right? I'd be laughed we, we out tried. of the room if I took Kirk Cousins at seventy-four, though, right? Yeah, you would be. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna take Trey Lance. Um, I, I like. Side. I think you could probably wait. You could have waited for Trey Lance to make it again, like that loop around. Yeah. Uh, but you, you know, did. it's not. I would. I was a hundred percent taking Trey Lance. You would never would have. Yeah, seen. love it, Pat. <laughs> no, no, no. He meant between I Hunter and the true. King. Yeah. I didn't mean to make it all the way back for like two more rounds. I meant two more picks because Pat picked nah. second, yeah. which is what you know. He and the other the guy does have a quarterback. Yeah. And yeah. that's what Pat think... noted too that he knew the other guy had an, a quarterback. So I think that little level of strategy would have been useful here but it's you know it's pretty much well, you know that hasn't happened earlier in the draft so i know now, you can watch, you can now in games. fairness yeah in, in fairness in season ball in season long leagues is not at which pat plays it's not common to look at your other <laughs> opponent's rosters no so, no you know so i'm back on the clock does miles sanders and um aj brown even count as a stack or no i mean sure yeah, yeah i mean on the yeah. offense but yeah. can well, i like take positive correlation between those two players i'm sure will you laugh when i take michael thomas here though um, his last healthy season, I don't know, he just set the single season receptions record. I've I'm fine with that. I mean, in contests where you want to have, like, true super teams, like you said, getting a player who literally set the single season receptions record was, like, one of the best age-adjusted players ever up until he got hurt. I don't mind betting on that guy. The only reason I wouldn't take him there is because he falls, like – you know, late enough in other drafts, I'm doing a bunch of these. So I'm I'm seeing Michael Thomas in like the late seventh, eighth. So that's kind of been my new price for him. But I was taking him some in the early seventh before I saw that slip. So I, I don't mind the pick. So what round are we in? <laughs> this We're is the 14th, I think. <laughs> seven, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm reading the screen correctly. No, it's uh, the seventh, Matt. You're correct. <laughs> So after you took Michael Thomas, we saw Alan Lazard, Dalton Schultz, Elijah Moore, Miles Sanders. There are real pick- human beings taking Alan Lazard over Tyler Lockett. Like, this is a thing This is happening in fantasy football this year, huh? Like, actually a thing that's happening. Not on this show, as far as I know. I don't know about <laughs> Crane's status with this. Certainly not me. I, I really haven't been taking any Alan Lazard. I got, I got to ask a question about a pick yeah, that happened last round. That was Russell Gage at 66. Is that right around where his ADP has been. And do we think that's more of a best ball phenomenon than a season long one? Or do we think in, in our drafts later this summer, we're going to see Russell Gage going that early as well? Unless the news changes, which I mean, it will, that literally how news works. But if you did a season long draft right now with your, your buddies from work or whatever, I do not think uh, he would go this early. I, I think it's people yeah. correctly. And then maybe over, overcorrecting for the idea that we could have Chris Godwin out to like November or something. We'd also get him for week one. I think it's very unlikely, but it hasn't been ruled out yet. We could also literally not get him until like week 12 or something. So with that in mind, like you do have to think there is a lot of like theoretical upside for 
a player who's like actually surprised me. I really wasn't in on relegate at any point in his career. And he very much exceeded my expectations last year in a pretty like garbage situation. So uh, I get why people are taking him at his current price though. I feel like I, I'm not in on that as much. Yeah. The current price is it sucked all the, the value out. I think yeah. uh, mm-hmm. it was totally fine before. I mean, I don't, I don't have that cheap Russell gauge that some other people do and kudos to you if you, if you got him there, but uh, in the sixth round, it's just a big no thank you for me. Like, so much of this is all just... going to be a no for me, week. dog. Yeah, it's a no for me. It's a classic that ain't it, Chief moment. Yeah. 15, 16, and 17 are, are what's going to decide the money here. Um, so three-fourths of the contest, you're going to have Chris Godwin taking his role back. I, I don't love it. So you two, Daily Rojo and Kyle, I don't think I'm ever going to call you Corrine anymore. I'm just <laughs> going to call you Daily Rojo. Took Traylon Burks and Marquez Valdez Scantling. Uh, we have more to come. We are in round eight. First, we're going to take a very quick break. Just a reminder, if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app powered by PointsBet, go download it now. The contests are free and easy to play, and you have a shot to win thousands by predicting what will happen in Major League Baseball on the PGA Tour and the NASCAR circuit. We also have a special contest on Tuesdays and Thursdays called Battle of the Bets, where you can agree or disagree with our experts for a shot to collect some cash. Meanwhile, the Fantasy Football Expo presented by NBC Sports Edge is coming to Canton, Ohio, August 12th through 14th. Join some of the top experts in the country, including the some of the very human beings I'm with right now, Pat Darty, Pat Crane, Denny Carter, Lawrence Jackson, and Kyle Dvorak at the only true Fantasy Football Expo in the country. Tickets are available at the Fantasy Football Expo. Ex- football expo.com the fantasy football expo.com use promo code NBC pass at checkout to save $20 and finally prep for your draft with the latest player rankings projections and more in the NBC sports edge fantasy football draft guide plus it is powered by roto world the premier source for player news and fantasy information take advantage of our preseason special and get the draft guide for $5 when you use promo code draft guide at checkout on NBC sports edge.com slash draft guide speaking of drafting we are back to it round eight has closed out Pat in a shocking, shocking turn of events after mentioning Tyler Lockett nine times, <laughs> you drafted him. So when do I get canceled for taking a second quarterback is what I need to know. I feel like you're pretty much eligible to take a second quarterback at any time. Uh, you don't get you canceled, be... yeah. Can I yeah, take I mean, Kirk Cousins can... now? I mean, do I take Kirk well, Cousins to force the stack or can I take Aaron Rodgers? Uh, Kirk Cousins' ADP right now uh, on the app is just 114. And what are we at pick like? 100. I don't know. 96. <laughs> Uh, 90, 97 96 97 i i would gamble on him making it back to you to, uh, uh, i t- timed out into him so well that happens <laughs> nevertheless uh i actually don't hate that though i think we're getting an historic season from justin jefferson this year and i might as well be yeah. around for the stack ride and my my bb3 winning team hey, you know what um, pat i'm i'm proud of you I'm proud of you, Pat. The last time you did this, I think you had like zero stacked players. You ended up with like <laughs> no, actually, Ryan. We had some really bad stacks is what happened. We had <laughs> stacks. They, I think they were like Jared Goff and like, yeah, Matt Ryan though. <laughs> Gotta Ryan get the Paris Campbell that. stack. So um, yeah. yeah, this round so far after, well, after you took Lockett, it went Sky Moore to close out round eight. And we started round nine with Chase Claypool, Kirk Cousins, TJ Hawkinson, Rashad Penny, Devin Singletary, Damian Harris. And we are once again a couple picks away from you, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, I, I know who's t- going after me uh, in terms of who's picking. So, like, looking at, like, like I'm not worried about Robert Woods not making it back to me with, <laughs> with Pat behind me if I wanted him, but I don't. Uh, I would be worried about having Garrett Wilson taken uh, or Rondo Moore's a little early, but players like that, the very typical uh, Rotovisian breakout guys. Uh, you know, I'm taking Garrett Wilson here because I'd really be shocked if he makes it past uh, past this team called Daily Rojo twice. <laughs> is that is that who you wanted uh, there, Daily? I don't think I would have taken him right there, but I would have taken him. Uh, he would not have gotten back to Kyle. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah. And you took Kenneth Walker, who is listed as Ken in this database. Are we calling him Ken now? Yeah, that's been that... something's really been tripping me up all summer. I think it's one of the underrated talking points that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, do we call him Ken now? I, I, I kind of like Ken better, maybe. Yeah. And we dropped the third. I don't know. There's a lot going on here that for us to process at this point. <laughs> any any comments from you, Pat? I wonder Hardy. Bob Woods is my one comment. Um, he just went Bob 108. Woods. I wonder Bob Woods. That's what I wanted. 
How I wanted Robert Woods? Are you the first person to ever say that? I've been talking myself into that. How how soon do I get canceled for taking a second tight end, folks? Who's when your was first your first? Yeah. Kittle? Got Kittle at forty. Mr. Georgie Kittle. I'd push it pretty far. I mean, you're fine here, but like, I'd be comfortable going deeper. Kind of wanted Zach Ertz. I'm not gonna lie. Um, well, he's still there. He's still he's there. Still Congrats. There. He's, still there. Like, well, he's gone. He's not gone. Yeah. No, I'm saying I, I want approval, though. I'm seeking approval. My father's love um, is what I'm seeking. <laughs> Kyle, this was Brand a pick. Tuss- I just took Rashad White where I'm like, he's not getting past you. So, Yeah. I was actually going to maybe take Rashad White, by the way. Well, you're not now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you're fine. I mean, this is probably on the early side to take a second tight end with George Kittle, but I've done that, particularly if it's like a guy I really like. I'm not um, even heard about George Kittle. He occasionally gets injured. Um, he does occasionally get injured. He does that, but I think when you take him this early, you're just betting on that not happening. More than yeah, like two point. or three games. You can probably survive something like that, but your bet is mostly that he stays healthy enough. Like you, you're not going to like – if you get nine games of your second tight end in the lineup, it almost certainly means something went Yeah, wrong that's actually good. Ball. It means you're not winning the BBM3 or well, whatever this thing is called. But, I mean, he could miss a big chunk of the first 14 weeks, and you have a tight end that helps you advance, and you're one of the few – George Kittle teams to make the playoffs at all. Uh, I think, you know, there's something to be said for that, like to get a little bit off the board occasionally with, with your build, especially if you're like, look, I really like this tight end here. Like I like Dallas Goddard a lot. I took him today with, I think a Pitts team, something like that. He uh, went by the way. Uh, Zach yeah. Ertz, he already went. So yeah, um, he, he has gone. I feel like the average age of the player Pat Darty is named is like 36. That's weird. I, and I don't, I typically am like Mr. Only draft young players. I guess in the best ball, I'm getting caught in the best ball headline. Except for my team, I mean, my quarterback's Trey Lance. Uh, I think ever since you mentioned lead poisoning, I don't think you've taken anyone under the age of like 34 since then, um, Pat. See. Well, you know what I'm taking? I'm going to rectify that with this pick because I'm going one of the most canceled players in all of football, Christian Watson. Wow. Well, has, a, has now, to it. what drew you to Watson there? Real quick. Um, oh, man. Hell, yeah. We're getting Isaiah Spiller here on the turnaround. Oh, I like that. Um, Christian Watson, I mean, just like I, 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 I approach best ball like very boomery. I just think upside, upside, upside. And I, we've gone through like the like kind of like the faulty notion that like there's there's no such thing as a rookie that has to get targets, quote unquote, especially with Aaron Rodgers. But if he kind of has to get targets, uh, kind of really good real life draft capital. I did always like the prospect profile I mean the boom bust prospect profile, but what are we round 10? Uh, there, I'm not seeing a ton of upside left at wide receiver. And there's just, there's stratospheric upside of Christian Watson. There's of course, like he averages 2.2 points per <laughs> game downside, but I don't mind gambling on the stratospheric upside of Mr. Christian Watson. And the week 17 bring back element goes on set. Oh, okay. everyone else. Everyone was yeah. quite literally. The yeah. Seven. Yeah. I actually yeah. kind of, I, I, yeah, I think it's like not the most common take to be in on Christian Watson among like, uh, you know, no sharp drafters. I've heard a single I person. I haven't heard sharp or unsharp who are in on him. <laughs> yeah. He's not a boomer or a zoomer player, but like that team, like, the guys who are competing with him for targets, let me queue up real quick. Uh, the guys who are competing with him for targets are like, they're just nobodies. They're true nobodies. Like, oh, like what could Sammy Watkins do on this offense? I don't know. Probably what he did on the Chiefs was have like one good game a year or do nothing like you do with the Ravens. Uh, Alan Lazard has been a nobody like his whole career. I, I just, I want to bet on guys who have a chance to be more than that on great offenses. Sammy Watkins and, has never had a good quarterback. I mean, he's finally got one. Lazard, you know, 75th in this draft um, i think people in real life are going to will be crying real life tears that they drafted alan lazard and around that was one number and not two like, <laughs> it's going to be pain alan lazard is a not good tight end please stop drafting him as if he is the packers number one wide receiver <laughs> Do you do either of you, Corrine? Corrine, you're laughing. Kyle, do either of you push back against that notion at all? No. Of course <laughs> I don't. So why? Yeah, why is it happening? I think it's like 
uh, just like this like linear A to point A to point B thing that happens. Like someone's got to get targets. I guess it's the guy who's been Aaron Rodgers' friend the longest. But like <laughs> there isn't like we think about the guys who like have curried Aaron Rodgers' favor and have gotten a lot of targets on the team. They're not like terrible players. Like, oh man, Devontae Adams must have earned Aaron Rodgers' trust. He's also incredibly good. Maybe that's how we earn Aaron Rodgers. Like, <laughs> oh, Jordy Nelson. Like, I don't know how this guy turned out to be good. It must be the Aaron Rodgers connection. Also, he's great. Like, the good players, even if there's right. a little bit of a weird thing that happens uh, with Aaron Rodgers' players, it's like, oh, the fourth wide receiver turns out to get cut. Oh, he wasn't going to be anything anyways. The good players are still good. It's maybe a little weirder than other teams. But, like, I'm still trying to bet on players who can be good. Brain, you just took Jameson Williams, pick 134. Which I kind of hate, uh, to be honest. But well, didn't kinda... Ben Raven tell us that he's not even going to play? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, that's I'm not good to... when you have a player that's not playing. But <laughs> no, it's unique. You normally want players who play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, even I know that. I So the thought is if you can get Jameson Williams to the playoffs, then you could really be in great shape because he's got this spike week profile, incredibly fast. Obviously, we all we're all excited about the talent, um, but the t- the tricky part is doing that because he's not going to play for you for half the year. Uh, I also took Traylon Burks, who probably isn't going to get a snap for the first half of the <laughs> season because he struggles with asthma <laughs> on the sidelines. So I only you know, but I still have four wide receivers: Adams, Bateman, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Tony. So I felt like maybe I could get away with it. It's my third lion. I had Justin Fields, uh, the Lions and the Bears play each other in week 17. So I'm setting up a little thing around that game. Maybe uh, Amon Ra feasts early on in the season. And then Jameson Williams gives him those sweet, sweet spike weeks in the playoffs. Crane, I have noticed that after taking Devontae Adams, and this doesn't surprise me, your next players are, your next receivers are second year receiver, second year receiver, second year receiver, rookie, uh, rookie, which is, uh, I like it. That's Can a, I, I like ask you guys it. a quick question before I make my pick? Anytime you can complete the Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson stack, you have to do it, right? Yes. No, 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 yes. no. Nope. No, no, don't do that. That's don't just, do that. Don't that's do just that. genuinely bad. bad. Well, I did. Oh, you do what? <laughs> oh, no. You know what's funny? I was drafting on, uh, unsurprising, I was drafting on DraftKings. You fit in right there, Roto Pat. You'd love it there. Uh, and I saw a lot of this. Is this like something that's becoming in vogue again? I don't, I think the thing is you can, I don't you, like, you can you under you know what the line of thinking is, of course, right? Yeah, of course I know what the line of thinking is. And I think you can even take it another level deeper in best ball where you're like, well, what if Cam Akers goes off for 15 weeks, but then his backup, you know, he gets hurt in the 15th week and his backup comes in for two monstrous weeks. But I, I think like anytime you just say, what about week 17? What about that? Like you should probably have more than just like what about isms for yeah. like things that we know are probably minus EV. You can make an argument that that's plus EV, but if we if and it's probably true that this is a, a minus EV move to make. You have to move the needle more than what about, right? You have to have a strong reason for that to be the case. And I think it's possible that this team has Cam Akers, blows up for 15 weeks, gets hurt, and then weeks 16 and 17, Daryl Henderson's the guy you need to have. But I think that's kind of a thin thing to bet on. He could have an independent role. I don't think he will. I mean, Sean McVay's had success with both approaches. For, you know, the bell cow who he ran into the ground and Todd Gurley, had much more committees the past two or three years, but maybe after, you know, the sad spectacle of 2.3 yards per carry in the playoffs <laughs> for Cam Akers, he's moving back to that approach and you can get like seven to eight catch weeks from Daryl Henderson, like three or four times a year. This, But yeah, probably not. And it's a um, pure insurance play that all the Zoomers are laughing at me for. My favorite thing about it, and this happened a few times during this draft pad is you asked the question and you basically already drafted the person. Well, I, I, like, I waited until I knew they were going to tell me not to do it. So I waited until there was five seconds left on the clock. I really like Great that. Strategy. Too, Matt. That's uh, <laughs> Should I do this? And there's like one second left. It's like, ah, it whoops. <laughs> that wasn't, t- by the oh, way, sorry, you didn't see, I took for my, the, the, the turn. I took big Bob Tunney, big Bob Tunney. 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 Big Bob Tunney. Oh, is that, is, we should give him that nickname. Bob big Tunney. Bob Tunney. That's um, yeah, you just coined that name. Uh, to translate into English, that means Robert Tunyon touchdowns. <laughs> so yeah, it means Robert touchdowns. Yes. Bob Tuddy. <laughs> uh, Kyle, round thirteen. Any any intrigue for you here? You got you got any exciting targets? Uh, I wouldn't say exciting, but I, I will be taking Gerald Everett here. I have it was always the plan once I didn't get an elite tight end to just go with three mediocre guys hoping one breaks out. And uh, I mean, Everett plays on one of the best passing offenses in the league. And all he's got, I love Donald Parham. I, I do love Donald Parham. But he's been a very limited role player all of his short career. Uh, and he's coming off a pretty brutal injury. So I, um, 
I think Gerald Everett, who's actually seen his receiving total increase every year for like five consecutive years, not getting super high, but not like plateauing at least, has a chance to be a weekly contributor. I'm not dying for his upside, but I didn't need to shoot for upside, especially having like Albert O already on this team. I needed someone to get me points and who didn't have a week nine buy because I doubled up on those with my tight ends. So you have Albert O, huh? Yeah, I do. Do you have a problem with that? Pat Crane, Mr. Greg Dulcich does. No, he does. You like you like drafting backup tight ends. Huh? <laughs> I, I'm too busy, uh, almost timing out of my pick to disagree with this. <laughs> and DJ Chark was that a is that a panic situation? Well, you guys really not, like really? Lions. I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a thing for these terrible teams. Uh, no, I mean I had DJ Chark uh, queued up, but I was definitely thinking like, is there a better pick to make this selection? I do uh, like. The Lions are fine. They certainly clear the threshold of not being atrocious, and they are so incredibly cheap. Do so. they, though? Do they really clear that threshold? I, I mean, like, this the is one way... of the, the 2022 storylines I'm most skeptical about is the Sharp World's love for the Detroit Lions. I mean, they have one of the probably three to five best offensive lines. The receiving room, even if you don't get James Williams, has improved dramatically compared to where it was last year, as well as like the running back room because they didn't get the full season from someone like Swift and TJ Hawkinson missed the end of the year. And Goff oh my is... God. Paris Campbell is my only Jared plan Goff. for this pick and he just went, by the way. Well, um, plus, I mean, if you knock the lines down, they're going to get up. If you knock them down, they're going to get up again. And this time they'll let a kneecap on their way up. I mean... They're motivated. Some, some I mean, they lighting. were the best or second best team against the spread last year as well. <laughs> Which I don't know how that really converts because to they fantasy. Were like 14 point dogs. <laughs> 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 all right. I can't get laughed at for calling them good against the spread when you said they bite kneecaps. All right. <laughs> they were they were also 14 point dogs and they were biting all those kneecaps out there. <laughs> Pat. Pat Darty, we're three picks. We're two picks away from you, actually. Do, one pick away. Do, do you have a plan? What, what's going on? Uh, I, have one plan. Have plan. I have one player in the queue, and it's David oh, Bell. Oh, that's... Cincinnati wow. Reds manager David Bell. Um, <laughs> if he David goes, Bell has an ADP of 198. I know. I'm just, just throwing throw ADP out, out the window at this point. Um, cause I don't want Corey Davis. I don't want Sammy walk. Actually, I kind of want Sammy walk. Now you will pick again after this pick. This isn't I, your last pick. I actually do want Sammy Watkins. Um, and everyone is, I don't want Daryl Williams. My God, my God. Um, it's crazy that we're in the 19th round in the 14th round. I will say, is there any case for George Pickens by the way? Yeah. Do you have what, what is it? Prospect, second round, second round, and he should play, uh, you know, in three wide receiver sets, pretty easily. That old Sammy. <laughs> Asked you for the case for George Pickens. All right, I'm not take Sammy take Watkins. <laughs> now, what, what would you say, Drew, to Sammy Watkins, though, Pat? Um, well, I think he's as healthy as he's been in several years, and the the team is down a little bad in the targets department. I don't know if you've heard. Got to complete the Christian Watson and Big Bob Tutty stack, even though I don't have the quarterback. That's why I'm going to take Jordan Love with my final selection. Um, <laughs> and, and once again, but it's without all saying, bring backs for your week 17. Yeah, bring uh, backs, exactly. Of a thing that almost doesn't need said because Pat knows it. So, like, he has a tattoo yeah. of Minnesota versus Green Bay somewhere <laughs> on his, like, below his eye. I think it's small, but you can see it if he gets it's, closer to the camera. Man, there uh, He no knows that it's a stack. It's a week 17 about. stack. I'm just going to time out into David Bell and be, frankly, totally okay with that. <laughs> We've really reached the point where Pat's just checked out. He's like, you know what, guys? I'm on auto draft. I actually am on autopilot. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm on Q autopilot. It's a little, a little different, folks. So we are in round 15. How many How many more rounds do we have left? Including 15. Uh, this will be 15, 15, 15 16, four. Seven, four. Four. My God. <laughs> are there any, as you guys look at your rosters now at this point, any... Uh, any glaring positional issues? Any Anything we, we really need to address? I still only have one quarterback, uh, but there are plenty, one, two, three, four, five, like six or so starting quarterbacks, maybe seven starting quarterbacks, like full season, probably starters. And taking Russell Wilson plus Albert O plus um, uh, Cortland Sutton, I made a pretty strong bet that Russell Wilson's going to be cracking my lineup 14 times in this season, 13. So I am kind of fine punting the second one, as long as it's someone that like will be a, full season starter what are your ideal position numbers what I mean what do you try to come out of it with x quarterback x running back x receiver x tight end it really depends when you take your first running back i think um but like if you go three running backs early i do i'll do like two four 
uh, what, 10 2. And then uh, if I go one running back early, I usually go five running backs, maybe six, depending on how long I wait. If I don't, if I go zero running back, I usually do six, maybe seven. Uh, wow. And then I'll go three quarterbacks. Like here, I want three quarterbacks, or I will go three quarterbacks eventually. Um, you will go three quarterbacks? Yeah. Because there's, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't have told Kyle that. <laughs> I already told you I need another quarterback, though. I don't, it wasn't the intentional sniping of you. Although I didn't realize that we had just had a run of four starting quarterbacks yep. Matt Ryan, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, and Jared Goff, which was me to stack him with DJ Chark. I did not realize they all went. So, uh, I mean, that wouldn't have changed my decision. What's actually. the absolute limit to the amount of tight ends you can take? I can't imagine taking more than three. Do you ever take oh, he's saying I, how I many will the system allow you to take? Oh, <laughs> I, I, if you went like total punt and you structured your team pretty well, oh, God damn, Tannehill didn't make it back. Um, <laughs> then I think you could get away with, man, I, sh- I was a big mistake. I should have taken Tannehill instead of Hooper. I already had the stack Oof. of Tannehill. That's just dumb. Just dumb, guys. <laughs> ah, what are we Sorry, doing I'll now? grab Wandale Robinson and get, I'm loading up on my giant stack. Uh, so okay, why were you looking for a there. quarterback? Did you do you still only have one? No, I have two, um, but it's Fields two. and Daniel, Daniel Jones, Jones. So I feel like team. I'd rather make that a three quarterback build. Um, I think you probably get away. With I feel this like with too. Lance and Cousins, I probably need to be a three quarterback build. Am I wrong? Am I right? No, I mean, especially having Justin Jefferson, no, you've already made a strong bet on that offense. At least, especially taking Justin Jefferson at the two, there are other good options there. So you've clearly put some sort of flag in the ground that, like you said, Justin Jefferson, like blow up season incoming. 2,500 yards. Yeah, 2,500 yards doesn't happen with at least 2,600 yards from Kirk Cousins. Like there's no way right. those two things don't happen. So Kyle, you took KJ Hamler in round 16 after Corrine took Wandale Robinson. I mean, you guys are talking about quarterbacks. We just saw Matt Ryan, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Jared Goff, and Ryan Tannehill go. I mean, who could be left? I, I... Davis Mills, the uh, Baker Mayfield's still out there. I don't hate the the very cheap Baker Mayfield sex. He's like perfectly fine, and he has clearly top two receivers. Like, I really can't imagine a third receiver. Like, Terrence Marshall was was so just uh, like didn't even appear in this the box scores last year that I, it makes me very bearish on his upcoming season like ian thomas is going to play all the snaps and see like nine targets so they have like three viable pass catchers on the team i don't hate the I, robbie might have already gone i'd have to look but i don't hate the backdoor baker um and then yeah carson wentz john Davis watson's like, available as well which is obviously a gigantic gamble and you probably it's probably like a team that doesn't need the quarterback it would benefit the most because he's obviously going to face a suspension of some kind. Yep. I want Julio Jones. He was one of my two primary plans here at pick 191. He's gone two picks before you, Pat. Oof. So your, your backup is st- your backup plan still available until Warren Zevon. Uh, Warren Zevon will him. be taking him to haunt me from beyond the grave. And is this where where are we is this a guy who is legitimately has an adp the guy that you're taking right now or is it he does he's well past his adp don't tell warren um yeah i mean i'm just fine it wasn't i hate taking rookie steelers receivers who aren't first rounders because they're just not going to feature them but i'm taking george pickens's upside at this point but he will does not play this year so it's actually a pretty terrible pick and then i'll have a who do you you think the third receiver is then (laughs) I, not not the rookie is always Mike Tomlin's answer. So uh, that's but all. The I other think. option is also a rookie in Calvin Austin. They, really? They I really... mean, they're they're thin at non rookie receiver three. It's gonna be like Gunnar Olszewski or something, isn't he on the team? I mean, it's is gonna be team? someone just not good. He fits Anthony the Ryan Miller. Switzer mold. Isn't Anthony Miller on the Steelers? I think you're right. I mean, Anthony Miller I... can talk his way off any roster, so I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, I'm about to time out, but I'm going to time out into someone I kind of want, even oh, though good. I don't know if he's going to play at all either this year, either John Mechie. Pat, I need to hear you pronounce Gunnar Olszewski's name one more time. What, how that kind of came out? <laughs> Gunnar Olszewski. Olszewski. <laughs> Kyle, one last <laughs> time. You turn into today. James Conner when you say that name. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's James Conner. Uh, Sean Connery. Football has broken my brain. <laughs> I know, yeah. Uh, they said James yeah, Conner. Please, God. Yeah. yeah, watch a movie. You turn it to John Connor <laughs> when you uh, say that name. John Mechie, Rotopat. Hey, John Daigle just commented, or 
commented in our chat. Anytime you can take Kenny Pickett's wide receiver three, you got to do it. Uh, thanks, John. Um, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even take his wide receiver three, John. I, if I wanted his wide receiver three, I would have taken Anthony Miller. That's a, I that's George a stupid Anthony point. Miller or Miles Boykin are the yeah. uh, or Cody White. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Miles Boykin. That's, <laughs> a, that's a, a cut. Or just Julio Jones will be the wide receiver three. Oh, so here's a wrinkle. I don't know if Pat you would remember on Underdog since we were talking about uh, like you know tight ends, positional allocation, and I, I see this. Uh, Taysom Hill is listed as a tight end, and I find that to be very fun. I don't know. I think it's it's really interesting the game theory aspects that go into taking Taysom Hill because you're in all likelihood probably getting zeros or like two point performances for most of the year, <laughs> but like one out of every like. 500 seasons in the simulation that is life uh we get like three quarterback games at tight end and you like if especially if those happen in the playoffs you cannot win without them right. i imagine it'd be so incredibly difficult like you look at the like the ones the one year uh or the one week last year two years ago that um Taysom hill was listed as a tight end on FanDuel, and he's like 100 in cash games and 90 percent in like tournaments and i'm thinking like he should be 98 percent in tournaments and that would be the same situation here though um you don't have the foresight to know that it's going to happen obviously yeah i think kyle, what i feel I like this say, is kyle is that before this draft you had 100 percent exposure to Taysom hill this summer <laughs> is, this uh, is the one time i, you I only him. recently got Taysom pilled actually i wasn't into it until recently <laughs> I feel like Everyone this is, goes through a and phase. This is like Denny, a, even Denny did. This is the level, like you know, one hundred conversation of uh, you know, the the floor is up that we need to go to the best ball. Like let's let's just go. Uh, let's talk about the stacking first before we introduce them to Taysom. <laughs> the Taysom. It's not battle. the only. It's not the only league that he'll be like this too. I think it's got Fishbowl. He was a tight end. Uh, I've, I've seen some other formats that never reduced his uh, eligibility to quarterback, and uh, it's important to know. I just noticed that other than Justin Jefferson, I got the all like stereotypical, like, well, I'm, you might want to own them in best ball receiver core. Right? AJ Brown, Michael Thomas, Tyler Lockett, Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins, David Bell, George Pickens, and John Mechie. Three rookies, one of whom like might not even be healthy. One of whom might be catching passes from Jacoby Brissett. One who is catching passes from Kenny Pickett. You got to love it. A run. Yeah, I don't feel great about my Falcons. team either. <laughs> Serious run on Falcons. Brian Edwards and Marcus Mariota going in the last three picks. This is uh, some guy took Marcus Mariota. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> is he stacked with anyone on your team? You better believe it. You think I'm taking unstacked Marcus Mariota? Got him stacked. You with got pits, right? Oh yeah. I was waiting for you to say like I've got Tyler Algier, Brian Edwards. <laughs> Look, this is my ninth Ole Miss Zacchaeus team. He's got Ole Miss Zacchaeus. No, I got completely oh, locked fun. out of a elite quarterback, which is a, a big Happens. bummer for me. But so we're coming up on Pat Doherty's final pick, the the all important second to last pick of the draft. Pat, should I take how many players you have queued up? Should I take Logan Thomas, who we uh, there's only one position that Carson Wentz targets, or should I take a total flyer and Hassan Haskins and bet against D Derrick Henry's joints? What should I do? Well, you could also take Kyron Williams and lock up the Rams. I feel. Yeah, that's true. I could take, could take Sonny Michelle and lock up the once in future and past Rams backfields. That's true. Could take Velas take... Jones and just trigger every lib alive. <laughs> I just took Byron I'm... Pringle, so I'll, I'll survive. <laughs> Probably taking Logan Thomas. I don't really. I don't know. That's I... why he goes super late for a tight end when he's I healthy. George I mean, he Kittle, plays... though. He plays 100% of snaps and sees like wide receiver two volume. He doesn't do a ton with it. He's not particularly efficient, but like I I'm fine with Logan Thomas. He's going to get so many targets, but I don't really need another tight end at all. I kind of do need another running back. Do you have you have Kittle and how many running backs do you have? I only have four running backs, and my RB2 is J.K. Dobbins, who might not play, and Isaiah yeah, Spiller and Daryl Henderson. All right, Rex Burke still got to be out there, there, I'd imagine. Yeah. Which Tell me which running back great. to take. I can't Rivers take says Rex Burke had – in his view, could have 55% of the touches to start the season. So, dude, they extended him like in the not in the middle, but before last year even ended. It was like it was probably right after the Chargers game when he went for 150. They gave him an extension after that. And all of their running backs are not 
like good. It's him. It's like, I think like Dari Kumbawale's on that roster. Yes. Uh, you know, Damian Pierce is not, I don't think, a particularly exciting player. He's the most exciting of them, but that's yeah, not saying just, a lot. It took like, Hassan Haskins, by the I way. I really do actually buy what Rivers is saying. Like Rex Burkett so is there. He knows the system. I just gave you, I just gave you from one of our fellow NBC heads, <laughs> sports <laughs> heads. I, mean, I don't like think the most fouled into the Texans of anyone on the planet. I do. You I'm skeptical about Rex Burkhead will even make the team. I mean, <laughs> I think you're also secretly worried about collusion, Pat. Ever since we referenced that, you haven't That's been true. taking any of the tips that Corrine That's or true. Kyle have sent That's your true. way. Okay, so we, we made it to the end, guys. Can you guys still access your rosters? And if so, yeah, I think I'll we should quickly talk through uh, quickly talk through the teams before we go. Boy, my team is let's, really let's, bad. Let's let's look at what we did. Let, let's look at what we did. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, one sec. I always forget how to how to access my teams. Oh, which Corrine, one did you I do most recently? Ready? I didn't name Kyle is. No, I, I, I got it here. Oh, okay, right. Kyle's ready. And view full draft. I draft right. from the phone like, you know, a true <laughs> degenerate. Okay, Um. yeah. So let's see. Actually, I'll just pull up the whole grid and we can scroll through. I oh, started. That's beautiful. Derek Henry, Aaron Jones, Cortland Sutton, Gabe Davis. Kept going receivers. Stacked with Russell Wilson. More receivers. And I. I we want to hear the names. We want to hear the names. Every single one of them. Uh, Gabe Davis, DK Metcalf, Amari Cooper, MVS, Garrett Wilson. I actually. I like my team. I know like uh, both of you guys said you didn't like them. And that's probably because I was, I was getting all the good picks uh, at the wow. expense of you guys. I assume <laughs> uh, cause I feel good about my team. Like it's not a, a stone cold killer, but drafting on stream doesn't feel easy. So, you know, then following up with James cook, getting three tight ends in a row, Friar Muth, Albert O Gerald Everett ending with a classic stack. Everyone knows this stack. Oh, DJ Chark man. plus Jared Goff in the next yeah, pick. That's, that's KJ you're... Hamler adding to the Denver stuff. Raheem Mostert and you didn't get Khalif Raymond for uh, Jared Goff, by the way. But that's well, you're good. thinking of Josh Reynolds. That's really who's kind of a breakout <laughs> Josh, star on that team. Yeah. Uh, we okay, can. So Kyle feels great. I like my team. I don't know. Great. I feel good about completing a draft successfully, not making any bad picks, getting correlation. I have the MVS plus my uh, Broncos players. So if that game goes off, hopefully from my side of the game, not the Chiefs side. I have a shot if I make it that far, obviously. Looks like Kyle thinks he's winning $10 million is what he thinks. I'd bet on myself winning at least two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 10 would be really impressive since... Uh, I win all, all of the places. <laughs> Karen, um, you want to you go next? Yeah, I'll go next. So Kyle, uh, as, he, as he noted, got a, a really nice stack with Jared Goff and DJ Shark, which, which wasn't ideal since I had uh, DeAndre Swift... Jameson Williams <laughs> and Amon Ross St. Brown when he made that selection. Oh my God. I uh, didn't realize how badly I, I bit you on that. Oh my yeah, God. You blew up the whole team. Wow. Which actually wasn't that big a deal because Justin Fields okay. fell five picks past ADP. It did not have a quarterback at the time. So I was like, figured, okay, maybe I'll play this from the Bears side. Um, and I ended up getting Khalil Herbert and Byron Pringle to go with oh. my. Really, nice, man. Bears. So those uh, those Lions guys, week seventeen bringbacks. You can't you can't snipe me, Kyle. I've got I've got backup plans. Uh, but anyway, the team in review: Justin Fields, Daniel Jones, Marcus Mariota. Uh, then I went at running back: DeAndre Swift, Alvin Kamara, Ken Walker. Loving the discount on him. Pick okay. one hundred and six here. Rashad White uh, and Khalil Herbert. And then at wide receiver: Devontae Adams, Rashad Bateman. Amon Ross St. Brown, Kadarius Toney, Traylon Burks, Jamison Williams, Wandale Robinson, Byron Pringle, tight end, Kyle Pitts, and Austin Hooper. So I have uh, with Daniel Jones, I've got a double stack with Wandale Robinson and Kadarius Toney, no bring back. And then uh, I have Marcus Mariota single stacked with Kyle Pitts. And I do not have do not have a Cardinal. So overall, I'm not loving the correlation, but I made a big bet that the Bears Lions game is the game mm -hmm. you need in week 17. So I've got mm -hmm. three Lions and three Bears. Over under That's 59. A lot of and lines and I can bears. see it now. Yeah. It's a lot of Lions and Bears. Don't, <laughs> you don't need to tell me. I'm the one who drafted them. And every time I was like, this doesn't feel good. Is it weird that I'd rather have Velas Jones than Byron Pringle? I, I think I would unironically rather have Velas Jones than Byron Pringle. So for me, they're like, you know, I took. Jamison Williams, Traylon Burks, and Wondell Robinson. So legit worried about like how much early season production I have a wide receiver. So yeah. breaking ties to Pringle is like super boring. But that, that 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 line of thinking does make sense. Speaking of legit worries about early season production at wide receiver, Pat Doherty, you want to tell us about your roster? 
My roster is Trey Lance and Kirk Cousins at quarterback, Cameron Akers, J.K. Dobbins, Isaiah Spiller, Daryl Henderson, and Hassan Haskins at running back. Not a good running back group. Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown, Mike Thomas, Tyler Lockett, Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins, David Bell, George Pickens, and John Mechie at receiver, George Kittle and Robert Tony. And fr- frankly, not a team, like just unironically, don't like the team. <laughs> but when I look at the team, the three things I immediately see, are, I mean, I either need a big time like Rams connection for Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson. I need like Rams type action or I need Trey Lance to blow up. I really need J.K. Dobbins to be healthy early in the season. That's like a like just hugely critical thing for the squad. And I really need my top four. I just need a lot. I need my top four receivers to live up to their potential or at least be spiked week guys, Justin Jefferson, AJ Brown, Michael Thomas, and Tyler Lockett. Cause my bottom five receivers, it's just like a really, really bad grab bag. Like a, just a really unappealing grab bag. So like, I need like, a, I need Justin Jefferson, AJ Brown, Michael Thomas, and Tyler Lockett to pull their weight in spiked weeks. Cause I, I, I just don't have the depth of receiver despite using nine picks on receivers. <laughs> yeah. At the spot you took Kirk cousins, given the, the JK Dobbins uncertainty for week one and given eventually how you would allocate the rest of your roster. It's why you took Kirk cousins, three guys almost immediately after that, who will give you probably week one production, Rashad Penny, Devin Singletary and Damian Harris. I would have gone one of those guys over Kirk cousins and try and bet on cousins getting back to you at your next pick, which is like, it's not for a while. So it's a, Thin bet to make if that's the win condition of your team. But like Kirk Cousins, I don't think adds so much to this team that you had to have him here. Having a running back who gets some points week one might actually be uh, a problem for you. I think Dobbins but, will be held. I frankly do think that. I mean, it's 12 months. It would have been 12 months since he was injured. That would be very, very, very unusual in this day and age. I mean, it'd have to be like straight up major setback territory. And there hasn't been any reports of a setback. And there was Ian Rappaport's report that he was questionable, which we, of course, and got immediate uh, refuting of from the player himself. Yeah. I just kind of ultimately, I don't understand why J.K. Dobbins wouldn't be ready for week one, unless there's been a major setback we have not heard about. And from the strident tone of J.K. Dobbins, I, it doesn't sound like there was some setback we didn't know about. Because so if there's, and the Ravens the are always kind of said opaque. there wasn't, even but, in the initial report. Even in the initial that's why report. it doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. twelve months, you're back from an ACL at the age of twenty-four. Just like straight up, you are. Yeah, so, there was more than just an ACL. Term. I know was right. some sort of lateral yeah. damage. I don't remember. It was like yeah. other uh, weird medical terms that I certainly not well. qualified. Yeah, but, was it uh, the LCL? I don't know. Yeah, there were other. I think it was. Yeah, involved. it was an ACL plus. Well, it was deluxe. Yeah, I got. I got the, the ACL plus. Is, but... Yeah, I got the ACL plus when it came out, but it's not as good as you think. Yeah. Well, that's fine then. I mean, Probably. Isaiah Spiller, be the, the Justin Jackson, the Larry Roundtree we never had last year, who convert two goal line carries in week one, and we're on our way. Quickly going back to Kirk Cousins, uh, Kyle, your tone was, or you know, basically what you said was, you didn't have to have Kirk Cousins there, but I think we all saw in Pat Doherty's eyes, he had to have <laughs> Kirk Cousins there. Like he he was he was dead set on that happening. Stacking's all that matters. It's true. It wasn't uh, like mathematical. You had to have Kirk Cousins in right. Roto Pat's eyes. It was more of a spiritual. You had to have Kirk Cousins. <laughs> well, it's kind of too like not loving the way things are going. If one of my gambles is an historic Justin Jefferson season, like I'm just going to get aboard that train with Kirk Cousins. And because he wasn't making it back to me the next go around. So that, that was part of the thinking. Quickly, before we go, lessons learned. Crane and Kyle, I, you guys do so many of these. I don't even know if you learn anything new when you do a draft like this, but do you have any takeaways from this one? Anything that stands out? Anything you'll be carrying forward with you from this draft? Well, I, I do think I made a mistake with um, my tight end two. I was like, oh, I'll grab Hooper. Sets me up for a double stack with Tannehill, which, uh, you know, that I wouldn't have taken Mariota. But I could have pieced together tight end two in a Kyle Pitts team. And going from Tannehill to Mariota feels a little less exciting. So I'm kind of like basically playing that. I was like, I already have Burks. I probably should have grabbed my stack, let my my tight end two be the thing I gambled, not my not my quarterback selection. Yeah, don't don't draft on stream. I feel like if we uh, like if you're at your home league and everyone's just cracking open a cold beer, don't say, hey guys, I'm gonna broadcast this to the internet and try and make good content out of it. Because like obviously, I think Crane could have looked at the team and been like, uh, yeah, I know that like this team benefits more from Tannehill and then gambling. Maybe you get Hooper, maybe you don't. Uh, but don't 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 draft on stream. No, I, I think also uh, I'm fine with like 
like you say, you know, Kirk Cousins wasn't going to make it back to you. He, he, your next pick would have been ahead, like behind Kirk Cousins ADP is more likely than not gone. I'm kind of fine gambling on these things in the hopes of building a team where like all the stacks come together below cost, or at least enough of them come together at below cost. And I'll kind of sink some teams that are kind of jagged, unstacked, or at least not stacked in the ways I want to, in hopes of building like one of every three or four teams isn't necessarily a super team, but I get all the things I want at the prices I want or better than that. I'm kind of fine gambling away a few teams on like, maybe this guy falls below ADP. Cause I think that's what you want is some teams that are above average, even just based on cost alone. Makes How much sense. are you correlating Kyle? Like, are you, what's the max that you're trying to put together from, you know, the same team and then a, and then a bring back for this, for people who don't know, I think it's like, it's almost 500 people in the final 96 week. 96 or 472 or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think for me, so it's, it's a pretty probably, big field. Like, yeah, it's still it's not... like, and I actually don't mind having a team like somewhat heavily stacked in the sense of like, if one game truly does score a lot more than the rest, then it's not really a big deal to get like, oh, well, you know, I had, you know, I don't take much Michael Hardman, but I had uh, a chief super stack and Michael Hardman because the game scored 70 some odd points. Got a long touchdown. He gets you 12 points on your team. This is the only catch of the game, the 60-yard touchdown or whatever. That player probably still has a decent chance of making your final roster or making that like week 17 roster. We saw last year, uh, Chess Liam's roster was Tyler Boyd made his team at like 11 points, right? It's not like mm -hmm. that's a, a great score, but it is a tournament that is big enough that you want to correlate, but not big enough that you need like the optimal lineup that you could enter with. You just need a high scoring lineup. So I don't, don't mind stacking a team somewhat heavily if the price is reasonable. I'm not really getting any like Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler teams, but like if I could have gotten like, you know, Mahomes, MVS, Sky Moore, and then like even Jarek at the end, totally fine with that. Okay. Pat Doherty, this was that your... Way. Yeah, I think it, it really... Piece. Like you said, it depends on cost, right? Do you want to take the three elite tight ends? No. One of those guys is like never making your roster, even though he's expensive and good. But do you want to take three tight ends? Yeah, sure. If you have bad tight ends, take three of them by all means. And for me, that's kind of the same way with stacking, as long as it fits within like some sort of idea of price. Obviously, I am just like completely guessing at what a fair price is for players who are all on the same team. Uh, you know, I'm just guessing at what is capping my upside versus boosting my upside. But I think uh, if you can even be directionally accurate in that, you'll probably be successful in the long term. Pat Doherty, your second ever best ball draft. <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating, but what are, you, what are your takeaways from this one? Thankfully, it's a mild exaggeration. Um, main takeaway is, I, uh, is Cam Akers' ADP is like just ludicrous. He's going behind Brees Hall, Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, the James Con James Conner is going to be one of the biggest heartbreakers of twenty. James Conner will not be staying healthy back. In you heard season. it here first, folks. He, and we're a two hundred and sixty pound Leonard Fournette, the RB twelve. That's also very interesting um, from the underdog drafting class. So that was the the, the running back ADPs will, will look significantly different in redraft season, for better or worse. Quite possibly for worse, because this just is a smarter group of drafters. Um, but I think we're going to be uh, see a really big running back ADP shakeup here over the next six to eight weeks. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, anything you guys would like to mention on the site, NBC Sports Edge? Team previews. Nope. I have my, like I said, Seahawks team preview. If you want to see um, like sort of an analysis of what like a, a dumpster fire would look like, like a you know, just garbage, 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 and then you set it all on fire. Uh, that's you'll read that if you go ahead and read my Seahawks team preview. Everyone else also has great team previews. I read uh, not just mine, obviously, it'd be kind of crazy since I wrote them, but I read everyone else's as well, and I like them a lot. So, mine, but others too. Got to do the Jets earlier this week, so check out that Jets one, which can probably compete with the Seahawks one for riveting reading. And of course, check out my, my GM rankings, which are live on NBC Sports Edge.com. I don't like where Bill Belichick is, don't at Rota Pat. <laughs> Bill Belichick and John Schneider are the ones getting the ats about this year. Anything uh, for you, Crane? I've been loving the uh, the beat writers uh, the podcast that we've been having on this feed. Um, Crane, you're going to be on the show Monday, by the way. I hadn't formalized that with you, but uh, right, uh, you, you want to be on the show? We'll be talking to yeah, Mr. To, yeah. Matt Mayoko from NBC Sports Bay Area and Michael Sean Duggar, Duggar, I'm sorry, Michael. Dugar. Dugar from The Athletic to talk to you. You got a good guess for that one. Good guess. We do. Nice. All right. All right. That's, so that's exciting. Check out all of that. 
and uh, coming up and already on the site. And don't forget to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, wherever you listen. Take a minute to rate and review us as well. We'd appreciate that. want to say thanks to everyone for listening and watching with us on this episode. Pat, <laughs> Kyle, Karain, thanks to you guys for drafting. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for all the latest fantasy and sports betting advice from NBC Sports Edge. And don't forget to sign up for NBC Sports Edge Plus to get the best in class draft guides as well as season long fantasy, DFS and sports betting tools that will give you the edge.